yeah, what, what I want to show you is um, how you can render splines um, using hair. So what I have here is a setup that is completely based on hair. I, I initially just created um, a circle and then um, emitted some um, particles from it and traced their or traced them in order to create those splines. And then I just made it editable to clean up the object manager. And here we are. So whenever you want to render splines um, and you don't want to use uh, like a sweep, for example, you can create a regif tag on that object. Let me just let me just do that. You can see that once I deleted it, uh, my rendering is black. But as soon as I right-click, go to regif tags, redshift object and as long as it's on a spline object you will get this curve tab and by default the mode is set to disabled but you can set it to hair strength and this will allow you to render hair here we go again so um, you can adjust the thickness you can make it really really thick but it has to think about it a little bit you can also um, adjust the scale, not only the overall scale, but you can, for example, bring down just the right side, which will um, bring down the, the thickness um, towards the tips of the hair. And here on the left side, it would uh, bring down the size of the root of the hair. So let's bring this um, back to one again. And the other thing I wanted to show you is, well, Darren already showed um, parts of it. So what I'm using here is basically just a redshift material with a redshift hair random color mode. Darren explained it already, and you can see there is some randomness going on. Um, I can also use the hair position um, node and pipe that into diffuse color, and you can see the gradient, also something that Darren um, showed before. But sometimes you don't want to render hair strains. You really want to render geometry so that you get some shading, um, like a, uh, for example, um, like a rectangle shape or yeah, a rectangle shape um, as the profile for the hair or a circle, something like that. And then you need the shading for the speculars and so on. And this is when you need to adjust the mode here. By default, it's just hair strands, but you can set it to boxes, cylinders, capsules, cones, and so on. And this will create real geometry here. So let it think uh, a little bit. And let me also and when check. you're using this, uh, these options and this tag, um, Am I correct in saying you do not need the uh, C4D hair renderer, right? Yes. So it's disabled here in the render settings. You don't need the hair renderer because um, all we need here is the spline as the as the source for the hair, so to speak. And what you just what you're seeing right now is that well, we lost the color. There is no color along the hair anymore, like the the color gradient and if we plug this if we plug the hair random color into the hair material you can also see that it's just one color here so there is no randomness going on anymore and this is because once you set it to another mode than hair strains once you really create geometry using boxes cylinders capsules cones or strips you need to make this uh, in a different way and if you search for hair, um, there is even one node that is called C4D hair attributes, but that's not the correct one. What we need is um, a node called point attribute. So we're using the node point attribute, or was it vertex attribute? So let me search. No, it's vertex attribute. So instead of using the hair random color, I'm gonna pipe in the vertex attribute. 
node into the Redshift material. And now you can see that we are getting this default color and we're um, here with an attribute name and a dropdown. So here we get a curves menu and here we get other exciting stuff like, for example, the curve ID color. This is basically, well, let's let it render. And maybe I should deactivate depth of field. But now you can see with curve ID color um, that it creates random colors for each hair. And let me disable the depth of field here. There we go. So we can see it better. So this is a good one, but it will create full randomness. There is no way of just restricting the randomness to, um, let's say, orange and a little bit of hue variation towards yellow and red. That's not possible. You always get full randomness. If you want um, this to be a little bit more controllable, you choose curve ID normalized because curve ID and curve ID normalized will give you as great a grayscale value. Let's wait for it for a second. So here we go. That well, we cannot see that very well. You see, actually, that should work. That should actually work. So maybe it's just in the setup right now. Well, let me let me just try uh, throwing a ramp on it, and let's see what it does. Then we're going to use a ramp here. Throw that into the diffuse cutter, and maybe in the ramp we are going to use some sort of preset. It's a lot of geometry that. Um, being created here, so it takes a while. Still very so fast, though. Below the preset, oh, here you can see it's the the colorization is there. It was it wasn't uh, too visible, but now you can see that we are getting some colorization. And if I wanted what I just told you before, a gradient or randomization from yellow to red, I can do just this, and now you can see that we have random colors on um, air geometry, so to speak. Now, if I set the vertex attribute to curve position, th this would give us the gradient along the hair based on the spline length. So, so that's like hair position? Exactly. Okay. So here we go. Now you can see that we're getting um yellow roots and red tips so that's cool that's pretty cool